Ready? Yep. Okay, let's get this going. Start and... Hey everyone, welcome to the Shrink Think Podcast. We are very excited here. Actually, Nathan's very excited. I'm just normal excited. If you're watching on YouTube, you know exactly what we're talking about. And if you're not watching on YouTube and you're just listening, you better head over to our YouTube channel. Unless you're driving, then don't. Then you can just watch us. It's very weird that people want to see us while we're talking. I know, but not when you're driving. This is like my little disclaimer because I don't want to be responsible for any <laughs> accidents out there. I would love to Watch be... out for that squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Hit your brakes right now. I, I wouldn't mind being responsible for an accident because somebody's like just laughing so hard at something we said. And nope. Like, I'm close not their eyes. <laughs> like, I was listening to the Shrink Thing podcast. I was so into it that I forgot about the world around me. Yeah. But so, we don't want anybody to get into accidents or having any accidents in their pants. <laughs> let's move right along. Let's do that. Let's do it. So today we are going to be talking about controlling yourself. <laughs> Speaking of the subject, not even joking, that was like... Such a perfect segue. Um, so the idea that it is that a lot of times we have feelings that are going on. We maybe feel anxious. We feel frustrated. We feel just whatever the thing that's going on inside of us. And a lot of people turn outward. It's kind of like this external locus of control that we've talked about in the past. A lot of people, we turn outward to control our environment or control other people because there's like a, a hidden belief that's underneath all of this that says that if I can control you or stop this thing from happening or control my environment, I feel so much better. I will feel so much better. But the problem with that is that you are responsible for your feelings and your feelings are inside of you and your stress or your frustration, your anxiety is inside of you and in your body, not in your environment around you. I mean, those things can kind of exacerbate stuff or whatever but it's more about like what's going on inside of you. So we're gonna kind of talk about what that means, what that looks like, why that's important, maybe even a little bit of like how that it has been or can be destructive uh, in your relationships or for the people around you, um, because ultimately we want you to be aware of like what you're doing and how that might be impacting people so that you can be like, oh yeah, I don't wanna do that anymore. That's probably a good idea. Those shrink thing guys know exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> Very good. So there's different ways that different personalities actually deal with this. Um, introverts have a tendency to isolate and extroverts have a tendency to just make you think differently. They want to have influence you, change you, because persuade, persuade because they may not like what's going on in a given moment. Uh, in an extreme example, which I feel like maybe is not that extreme anymore, I don't know. Um, this whole thing around being offended is is similar to this, right? So, if um, if if you're gonna have like a not going to have, but it comes from like a, a victim mentality. So, you have an idea that you are somehow less than of this big culture that's going on right now. Which I I've got a teenage daughter, and I hear about this stuff, um, the drama at middle school and that kind of thing. Everybody's trying to assign themselves disorders, you know, like I'm. <laughs> I'm an anxious person. I probably have autism. Like, oh, yeah. Well, I'm an anxious avoidant person. My <laughs> disorder is worse than yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I get the, the most special treatment. <laughs> That's right. So it's like if I can label it or if I can remind you that you have to be different because I have this disorder or whatever. Like, you should know better because, I, because I'm this way. Or I'm offended that you said that so you can't say those things. You know, like there are some there are some legitimate offensive things that people do and say like that are intended to humiliate or degrade. On the other hand, when somebody's explaining something and they say the wrong word because they're just I don't know, they're just talking and it comes across different. Or they just say something that they're not trying to be offensive. They're not saying anything that's necessarily offensive, but you are offended by it. Right. There's um, there's kind of two different two different personality perspectives on that too, because one will be, um, they just need to inform you. I don't know if you know this, but what you just said was very offensive, you know? V versus what you just said, I am offended by, or I feel offended by. Right, and honestly, you can let somebody know that, as we talked about before, we're not telling you not to verbalize your what you, what's going on in your space. What we're saying is you can't expect 
that by doing that, you're controlling all the space. It's just unrealistic to think like, oh, if I share this, then everybody's going to be totally different. And if they're not, then I'm entitled to be more of a freaking jerk to everybody. To everybody. And, and maybe even it's like, I have, a, yeah, you said entitled, I have a right. And maybe even people look at it as I have a responsibility, like a social responsibility to the world around me or a responsibility to you to make sure that you know whatever this thing is. And so that actually is putting you in a power over position over other people or over the scenario, which is, that's not a good thing. All right, so this is about, we're, I'm not really trying to make it a, a, uh, this thing. We've actually did a podcast on not being offended. I'm using this as, a, as an example because it's kind of one of those clear ones that everybody's, a lot of people I think have, have experienced this with friends. And maybe you yourself have been like, man, that freaking bugs me. And choices that you might make regarding that would be, I'm not hanging out with that person anymore. Um, I would challenge that one because you're talking about based in how you feel in certain circumstances around the person, you're going to now not spend any time at all in all the circumstances <laughs> because of a few circumstances. And, and so what you're doing is you're also limiting your environment to only the things that make you feel comfortable. Right. And again, we're, we're assuming that kind of assuming the best about other people or giving people the benefit of the doubt because people say and do things that are, you know, inadvertently hurtful or offensive or disrespectful or something like that. We all do that. And that's that's not where we're trying to do. It. It's not our intention at all. And so there needs to be some leeway, some space where people can do things that we're uncomfortable with or we don't like. And that's just a normal part of relationships. So what you're doing essentially by removing that person from your life is you're saying, I need to live in this bubble or create a bubble around me where I'm only surrounded by the people and the things that I like and I agree with and I'm comfortable with. And that's not the real world. No, it's not. I, in, in my personality, I'm, I have more of a tendency to, uh, I'm a two on the Enneagram. I have more of a tendency to care about what other people are thinking or doing and I don't want to I don't want to offend somebody or not that not that our listeners are out there going, well, dang it, I really wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> if you are, please go listen to our Don't Be Offended podcast. <laughs> well, I'm thinking in terms of Enneagram 8s wouldn't worry about it as much. They'd, yeah. they'd just be like, I'll just tell you what I think and, and not, however you Not do because it. they are they want to be rude. They're just not concerned about what other people think. Right. So um, in, in that way, what I find myself doing, I've got a couple friends that... I limit my time with and so I had to do some I, I have to do some thinking about this because I naturally will be I, it takes so much energy for me to edit myself when I'm with them that it's exhausting because I I'm trying so hard to respect where they're coming from are you saying that I'm I'm difficult to be around Nathan are you telling me that there's something wrong with me that you have to edit yourself is that what you're well, I didn't I, want it to come I'm out this way, of, but now that we're here, I can't in the believe you're. I, are you like passive aggressively trying to say this to me <laughs> on the podcast while we're recording right now? Less passive, more sir. Um, <laughs> and, uh, um, but what I've had to think through is I have to get in. I've got into myself and gone, okay, what what is the deal? Um, the this whole thing where I'm assuming that, that I'm assuming some things. First of all, I'm assuming that there's whatever's going on in my headspace at any given moment, I am nervous to share it because we're gonna get sidetracked on some conversation. It's going to get bigger than I want it to be. It's gonna be misinterpreted. Um, it's gonna be somehow viewed a certain way so that I just don't say it. Um, and as I started thinking about this, I'm like, well, wait a minute, can't, can't I be myself with this person? So how much um, internal management do I actually need to do? Because the reality is, is I am who I am. And it's also the other person's responsibility to uh, somehow in their own world, respect the fact that I've got my own process. And that's not my job to manage their process ahead of time. Yeah, there's like a certain amount of like mutual respect that you're describing that you're wanting from the other person and that you're giving to the other person uh, from the standpoint of, I've got my personhood and my space to be myself. And sometimes that's going to bleed over into or like rub up against who you are. And there might be some of those friction points. Um, but that's kind of like the grace and the, you know, the space of relationships where that's going to happen sometimes and that's okay. And vice versa on the other side, you toward me, you want some space to be yourself. And sometimes I might find that 
difficult or frustrating or you know offensive or whatever that may be and um but but i'm giving you space to be yourself and i'm not trying to control you because i'm like well this is who you are in that from that standpoint i guess let me just say this it kind of reminds me of the remorse topic that we Mm -hmm. talked about in a previous episode that like when you're saying you're sorry you want to be impacted by the other person and how they're you know how they feel whatever in a similar way if I'm the other person and I'm allowing you, Nathan, to be yourself and you say or do something that sort of rubs me the wrong way, the question that I always ask myself is like, what what is it about me that I'm so bothered by or frustrated mm-hmm. about? Not like, oh, right. just blaming you. You're so this or you're so that. Because you're just being you, right? I'm c- kind of giving you the benefit of the doubt and I'm saying you're just allowed to be you and who you are. Why, how, why and how can I stretch myself grow as a person to make more space for that so maybe i'm not so rigid or i've got more flexibility to absorb some of that without being so offended or getting so upset yeah i think if um oh man i lost it i had this great one um well recently you and i were were talking about uh actually we weren't talking but this is kind of a a a way to explain the space component uh when it was like last week i was I was using your coffee mug to, I, what I was gonna do is I'm, I was, we were at the Keurig and I was gonna fill up this mug and then pour it into my, my oh, thermos. Yeah. And um, I, I grab it and you go, that, that's my mug. <laughs> <I remember. laughs> and I'm like, and my first thought was, um, I'm not using it. I'm just going to pour it out, like, you know, whatever. But then I thought, um, well, this is not my mug. You know, so I said, would you like me, would you like to have like me not to do this? And you said, yes, I I can't remember exactly what I said, but it it was somehow I asked you about like, do you want me not to do it? Or do you want, do you want it now or something? And you said, yeah. And I, so I just gave you the mug and I just got a different one. But, but this, the thing that I had to go through in my mind, like, um, even as I reflected was I have all these reasons, uh, well, not like a lot, but I had some, some, what I had as valid reasons in my mind to do what I was doing mm-hmm. that also was, that should not quote unquote offend you, bother you, or you should not care about these. I'm just going to do it. But then I thought like, he's, he has his experiences. I want the mug now. Like I, I you know, and, and I don't know if there's a time thing or whatever, but, but I, and I thought I can't, I, I don't get to usurp that and just assume that I can do whatever, whatever my reasons are you have to then like you should obey them you know well and i mean this is a little bit of a sidetrack just a really quick rabbit trail but that's why i think communication is so important because you know afterward we talked about it or whatever and you're like i just was gonna you know fill it up and then dump it out or whatever i wasn't gonna drink out of it because essentially in my mind i was like oh you're gonna use my mug um i mean it's literally like i i made it you know i painted it or whatever mm-hmm. um you were going to use my mug and drink out of it and then like i i have to use something else you know mm-hmm. but that's not what you were going to do so like once you told me that i was like oh yeah you can use my mug if that's right. all you're going to do with it right this is why communication is so right. important between people and in and also that's why it's getting us back on topic as well it's so important that you manage those things that are going on inside of you because that could have unnecessarily, it could have been an unnecessary conflict or argument between us where it's like, why are you using my mug? And you le- legitimately have good reasons and you're not really doing the thing that I think you're doing. <laughs> right. And so I would have just gotten upset. We would have had this argument over no, re- like no legitimate reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny because it's like there's, there's those two sides of that. And in, in, in some ways, just managing your own space and respecting the space of others actually kind of works as a default where you just even in a misunderstanding it doesn't it doesn't go um where it shouldn't because you're you're just going to respect what's going on they're like shocks on a bike or on a car where they absorb some of the impact of things to make your ride smoother or to make it so that you know what's happening inside like if i'm holding a you know a coffee mug or whatever it's like if i've got a liquid in it it's like If I go over bumps or holes in the road or whatever, and I've got shocks, it's a pretty smooth ride. I'm not going to spill. Bad things aren't going to happen. But if I don't have those shocks, I'm like, (laughs) like, you throw it into my face. I honestly thought there was something in there. I was like, what are you going to do? You have to see that thunder. I thought he was going to throw something in his face. Um, Anyway, yeah. So, so some of this is just it's respecting what's going on for you. But as you, 
as you understand, like as you take the time, for example, in my previous example, I'm talking about, I'm, it's not like I'm not going to spend time with these people. It's that in my mind, I'm like, man, it's going to take a lot of work. Um, and I just don't want to do that today or something. But then as I explored it, I was like, wait, I'm not even, I'm, I'm automatically withdrawing the permission I'm, I'm entitled to, to be who I am. That's dumb. I at least need to do that and then see what happens because I'm not even giving the other person a chance to respond to those other things. And that doesn't mean there needs to be like kind of an argument about it. Yeah, you're, you're making assumptions and you're also predicting the future that has not even happened yet. And you're also taking away a potential opportunity from the other person, from me, for example, to do the right thing or to respond in a different way. Or maybe it's an opportunity for me to grow of like, oh, you know what? I'm Let me ask a question or let me let Nathan be more of himself. It's like you could be taking away that opportunity from me just because of your own anxiety. Mm -hmm. I think uh, um, I've, I've got like so at home we'll play we'll, we'll be we play games as a family a lot like um we have game night where friends and family can run it and so what uh i'm i'm called next level they'll call me because what happens is somebody will say something that's mildly on a provocative i know where this is going <laughs> and i will just go one level and they go of course you, okay we shouldn't bring this up when nate's around like, like and when we're talking levels we're talking like most people are like you know about a 10 foot level from one story to the next nate's like 100 feet is the next level <laughs> you know what i hate i hate xyz you know what i hate and they're like don't say it just, <laughs> yeah, just, right. don't like, just but i but i have to i actually do try to keep in mind that they're they're there are going to be situations with that that I need to I need to respect. So that is me. But on the other hand, I don't necessarily need to go where my mind goes like, say this. You know, I can go like, oh, you're in a mixed company. You got to be. You got <laughs> you to be. Pro so that's or you're on a podcast. <laughs> Maybe I should be a little bit professional. <laughs> Which is why it sucks. I want to so bad give you some examples. So bad. But uh, I sound like a billy goat just then. No. <laughs> Oh, we got we got to turn for home here because this has got to be end up a little bit a little bit of a shorter podcast. I'm sorry, little campers, you're sitting by there having a little marshmallows camping. And this is actually us. just a great opportunity for them to manage what's going on inside of them. Mm -hmm. You know, the sadness, the fear, the anxiety. Like, oh no, what am I going to listen to next? You they know? have to do a longer one. <laughs> yeah. So I think we got at the gist, though. Is there anything that you wanted to add? Yeah, I think so kind of the original concept is like instead of controlling other people or the environment, right? Because when you have like what you're describing is you're turning inward and asking yourself questions. You're what we call introspecting, right? Intro uh, intro is like inside yourself or expecting is like you're examining or evaluating whatever. So you're examining inside of yourself. What am I thinking? What am I feeling? What are my options or what am I going to do? as opposed to turning outward toward blame or criticism or um, I guess it would be control. It's like telling somebody else what they need to do. Like, oh, you're doing this. You shouldn't do that. You need to be doing this. Um, that would be like if you what I'm essentially saying is if you did these things, then I would feel better. It's your job to make me feel better. And that's not true at all. What we're saying is like, it's my job to know myself and to make myself feel better, to feel grounded. And so everything you were describing is like, oh yeah, if I make those adjustments inside myself, that's better for both of us. Yeah, and the other, you know, I introduced this, we were talking about, well, actually Aaron introduced this, but um, talking about the difference in personality. Those folks out there that are more introverted, your tendency is gonna be to isolate, right? To, but the same thing we're talking about is what we're asking you to do is, you would do the introspection, which is gonna come really natural, you're gonna be a professional. But the challenge of what Aaron was talking about earlier on the assumptions that you're making and that you're not giving the people in your world uh, the chance to be more of themselves, to, to, to grow in their own stuff, where you kind of put yourself out there a little bit, let, let somebody know something that maybe they wouldn't have known because you're okay to say it, and then letting it be. And part of that is like when, what you, when you said you're making assumptions, we did a whole episode on our podcast about being honest with yourself. This is why being honest with yourself is so important. If I'm examining myself, then hopefully I will see that I'm making assumptions. And then if I'm being honest with myself, I will be able to admit 
you know what, that's an assumption. That's not a good thing. I need to make space to see what's actually going to happen rather than assuming what's going to happen. Right. And so it, it's, it's interesting because it kind of happens two different ways for introverts versus extroverts. But the truth is, it's the same thing. And so it's, it's about taking this stuff seriously and being able to, you can control how you interact with the world, but you can't control the world. Um, and you, you some, some of these folks, some folks that you get around, you might even have to just not be around because it's just too anxious. But the only way you're actually going to know that is if you take some time and do your thinkings about it. That's a new one for you. Have a great day. Nice. I like that. <laughs> cool. Yes, right, that is very good. I love that. Cut it out. <laughs> Cut it out.